I'm just going to pull up a browser, and in real time, we're going to come up with cool ideas based off of what you guys want to talk about.、Um, so, let me get a quick idea of who, who's here. So,、um, who, runs, like, who, who, who runs their own business? Oh, great.、Um, can someone name a couple of businesses that you guys have so I understand who's here? What? Football guys. Football guys. I know all about you. I heard you're doing really well.、Uh, it's a daily email? And what's it do? Oh, sick. That's, <laughs> that's going to be awesome.、Uh, and you, you guys have, a, I've heard you got a big subscriber list.、Um, who else? Newborn Care Solutions. Newborn what? Newborn Care Solutions. And is it a, what is it, content? Like a B2B blog? Consumer. Oh, consumer, okay. How about you? I sell legal contract templates. Legal, con- you what? I sell legal contract templates to online creators. Sell, okay, that's cool. And then, how about you? Online course on visual design, UI design. Oh, what's it called? Learn UI design. Great, that's easy. Well, that's an easy example. How about you? Networking great for women in business. What's it called? Business and bubbly. Great. And how much, do you, how much does it cost? $35. $35 a month. All right.、Um, we'll do two more. Where's Isaac? How about this guy? This, is my, this guy's my favorite. Isaac, what's your thing? I have seven really cool、uh, Scandinavian Airbnb cabins, and I rent them out nightly.、Uh, let's do two more. Who wants to say what they do? You and then you. So, Craftsman Creative, it's an online site for creators, and I do online courses. Awesome. Podcast looks up. I help podcasts. Awesome. All right. I'm just trying to understand who's here. So,、uh, earlier in this talk, I was talking about how、uh, I got like 100 ish thousand. I forget the number. It could have been 200,000, but around 100,000 in the first like 12 or 13 months with the hustle. It was basically all blogging. By the way, this is my wife, Sarah.、Um, she's my security blanket. I, I don't go anywhere without her.、Uh, And、um, with the hustle,、um, it was all blogging. I didn't have any money when we started it. I mean, we made revenue through conferences, but the way that I made those conferences popular was through blogging. So, like, I decided to launch this conference called HustleCon on June 1. I, I was like, June 1 I'm,、uh, is the day I began working on it. And the event happened six weeks later, and we made like 60,000 in revenue in that time, and the costs were. Four or five, six thousand. So it was like a lot of very, very profitable. And it was all through blogging and through email lists. And so, like, I always got good at,、uh, or I was always somewhat good at this. I used to own a chain of hot dog stands, and I was really good at, like, convincing. It was called Southern Sam's Wieners as Big as a Baby's Arm. <laughs> and it was in Nashville, Tennessee. And so, yeah, it's hilarious.、Uh, the promotion was that if you put your baby's arm in a bun and take a picture of it, we'd give you a discount. Um, so, I was always like, kind of good at like, using humor, just like, n- not even humor, just like when people don't expect you to be quirky, I would be quirky and, and I would sell hot dogs. And then my friend Neville Medora taught me about copywriting, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could like, take this copywriting thing and write one page of copy and make it so anyone could see my stuff and eventually buy something. And then I was like, man, I could do this content thing where I can like, express my emotions, I can express. Uh, I can get people to eventually like, like my brand and buy stuff and trust me. I could express new ideas, and I thought that was amazing. So I got really into content, particularly via content,、uh, content via the written word. So podcasts and YouTube, we could talk about that if you guys want. I'm not the expert at YouTube.、I'm、maybe would be considered an expert on podcasts because ours is so popular, but frankly, I have no idea why it got popular, but we could try to talk about it.、Uh, but for written word, I, I know my shit. So we could talk about that. So, You want to go to the next one? So, like I said, this is me and Sarah. That's our dog, Sid. We live in Austin most of the year. Right now, we're living in Brooklyn.、Um, and、uh, you can go to the next one. And、uh, today, we're going to talk about、um, coming up with ideas. So,、um, a lot of people, when they're writing, like, does anyone read The Hustle?、Um, for the people reading, oh, there's Steph. Steph works at The Hustle. She, I referenced her a bunch. For people who read The Hustle, a lot of times what they say to me, or、uh, they'll say, like, how do you guys come up with content ideas so often? Like, how are you like, producing so much stuff? Does anyone follow Trung, Trung、uh, on Twitter? Trung's the guy who used to work for me. Does anyone follow him? 
Um, uh, what about, tell, tell people, what, what's Trung do? Uh, shares, memes. shares memes and all types of content. But like, how many times a day does he do it? Like a dozen times a day. He's like sharing like dozens of pieces of content. And oftentimes, a lot of people will say to Trung or say to me or, or people at The Hustle, they go, how do you guys come up with ideas? for new content all the time? That's like a really common question that we get. Does anyone ever have asked themselves that about like other people? Like how are you constantly coming up with new ideas? It's really not that hard. You, you just gotta be able to find it. So let's, I'm gonna talk about how you can find some of those ideas. So what I'm gonna cover are some really basic things, but they're really effective. And we're only gonna talk about a few of them. And then we could talk a little bit more about um, each person's like individual uh, situation. We'll try to dive deeper on them. And where's Steph? Steph, uh, I'm going to ask you to chime in a bunch as well. So this is Steph Smith. She's talking in a little bit. But Steph runs, I mentioned Trends earlier. That's a, the subscription service that The Hustle had. It was a really big business with like only five people, I think. She ran it. And so Steph's also a creator. Now she's the host of a new podcast at uh, Andreessen Horowitz, the, the venture capital firm. And uh, Steph was a writer at The Hustle as well. So we're going to talk to her. And she's got. What do you have, like 150,000 followers on Twitter or something like that? Yeah, 100,000. So Steph's also great at content. So I'm going to ask her to chime in sometimes. You can keep going. So I kind of said this earlier, which is there's, kind of, there's more buckets than this. But for when people say, like, hey, how do I make content? I'm like, dude, I can't answer that question. That's like someone asking, how do you make art? I don't know. Like, what, what, do you want to write a hit song? Are you trying to learn how to make like a sculpture that's like modeled after some other famous thing? Do you, is it, are we talking fashion? Like, people say like, I just want to get into content. I'm like, I don't know what that means. That's too broad. We got to get it more specific. So, there's kind of these three very small narrow buckets that I think about content. There's more of them, but a lot. The most popular ones are basically like, what do people search for? So, if your convert kit and people search for. Um, What's the MailChimp versus ConvertKit? You want ConvertKit to show up number one, so ConvertKit can share what their opinion on how they're different and eventually convert that customer. That type of stuff, does anyone do that for their site? You guys do? That stuff's pretty easy. I mean, it's kind of hard to do, but like, it's pretty straightforward. We're not going to talk about that. The second thing is just like things that I just want to say. It's like uh, uh, things I think the world should hear, things that it's my opinion on something. That's important too, but we're not going to talk about that either because we're, I'm just going to go from the assumption that like there's a business purpose behind this. And eventually you can do that stuff once you get more popular. You know, if you're like Oprah, like everyone wants to hear Oprah's opinion because she's like been there, done that for so many amazing things. But like when she was like 21, if Oprah said like, oh, my opinion is this, I'd be like, who the hell are you? I don't care what you think. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you need like a little bit of a, a, of a platform. So we're going to talk about the third thing, which is, when I need to write something, like if I have a deadline and I have to write something that I need people to read and, there, and there's a business deadline behind it and there's a business objective, what I'm going to show you is what I do when, I, when I'm on a really tight deadline. So my most important thing, how many people here don't use Reddit? It's crazy that it's always like that. So how many people here do use Reddit? Okay, so about half. Reddit is like the fifth or sixth most popular website in America. It's very popular, and it's like an oxymoron. It's super popular, but a lot of people haven't heard of it. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's almost hard to explain, but it's also very simple. It's uh, a bunch of different sub forums, and each of those forums has like cult followings based around a certain topic. So for example, I was building a home gym at my house. And there's a subreddit called Home Gym where 100,000 people are sharing really cool ways to build a home gym. Sarah, uh, what's the name of the, curl, the curly hair thing you're part of? Probably curly hair. Curly hair. <laughs> there's a subreddit called Curly Hair. And she goes there to get like, advice and product recommendations and like, you know, like a community for people who have curly hair. There's one for people. Does anyone here love like, popping pimples? Just admit it. Just admit it. I'm that person. <laughs> There's a whole subreddit for people who like love like watching things get popped. And like so my point is there's a subreddit for everything. Anything that you can think of. There's a subreddit for peeling, meaning 
like, have you guys ever like peeled off a piece of plastic off like one of these like fancy screens, and it's like it's really relieving? There's a subreddit for that, and it's just videos of people peeling plastic off of stuff. There's a subreddit for everything, so that's why I love it. But the real reason why I love it is because A, it has all these people, but B, it ranks different content for you so you can see what type of stuff people actually care about. So for example, what I like to do is if I had, does anyone have a home or like a fitness related business? Uh, let's, you do, what's your business? Um, I just coach people on nutrition. Nutrition, that's a good one. So uh, I don't know much about nutrition, so what I'm saying might be like wrong or no, so it's just an example. Let's just say that, um, what's like a popular diet right now? Uh, keto. Keto, great. Uh, so there's a whole subreddit for keto. And let's go to it. Can we go to it? Yeah. So I'm going to show you how I, I, if I was in your position, how I would come up for an idea related to keto. Now, this is a really good way to do it because even if I don't know anything about keto, I can kind of sc scroll through this and I can get the, get the vibe of it. So this is a subreddit for keto. Look at, uh-oh. No, it's not a pop-up, it's this thing on the screen here. All right, check this out. Stop, 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 sir. You see, oh yeah, click. You see where it says, what's that say? 3.1 million people have subscribed to this. So our, our, uh, the reason that's amazing is, A, I can find interesting interests on just based off of how popular there's a particular subreddit. Steph, what's a popular, what's a, a, a trend that you picked on because it started getting popular because they started getting more followers on their subreddit? Um, I think like make DIY soap. DIY stuff? DIY soap. DIY soap. Did you guys know DIY soap was a thing? I didn't. Steph knew it because she saw that this, this, this subreddit was growing quickly. She's like, look how many people are signing up for DIY soap. So like, that's like, there's, and we could easily turn that into content. But back to keto, 3.1 million people. Now I'm gonna show you what I like to do. So when I use subreddit, what I always do, the reason I like it is A, there's a lot of people, and B, it sorts content by most popular. And remember how I told you the Steve Harvey example about how he, I was like, well, this Steve Harvey thing, like it's already, like I know, I, that's already crossed some threshold where I know that that topic is fairly popular. Now I need to come up for a new spin. So I'm gonna show you what content people care about, and then I'm gonna try and come up with a new spin for it. So let's do, so here's what I do. Click top, let's do, because there's 3.2, you can do top by week. So top by week, okay, hopefully this works. I've never done this before, uh, this topic. I know nothing about this topic, but I'm gonna try and find something interesting. All right, hold on, 100 pounds down. Someone lost 100 pounds. Keep, uh, go back, well, hold, hold on, scroll down. So here's the goal is I look through all of these things, all of these posts to find ideas, and then scroll all the way down. This is where the goal is, is the comments. This particular example is not a good one, so go back, let's find a good one. Scroll down. Hold on. Guys, keep going down. Oh, no, that's a good one. Just go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Guys, the answer. All right, click that. Check this out. This is kind of interesting. So you must know a lot about keto, right? More than me, more than most people. Is there a problem with electrolytes and intermittent fasting? Is that a common problem? I had no idea. I had no idea that was a thing. So the way that I get ideas is if I'm a writer for a fitness blog, to me, so what's the, so let's read this. Hold on. So, guys, the answer to nearly all questions posted here is electrolytes or intermittent fasting. If you're feeling down, it's electrolytes. It's electrolytes, you're a typo. It's electrolytes, it, electrolytes if you have low energy, it's electrolytes if you have insomnia. <laughs> Oh, sorry. It's electrolytes if you're on edge. Guess what? It's electrolytes. Basically, <laughs> this person is saying like electrolytes is like the cure to all types of stuff. Scroll down. Yeah, I didn't know that people thought that. And I'll scroll down. Now, here's where the gold is. Let's read the comments. Uh, I don't care about that first one. Uh, it's what plants we crave. Uh, that's not that meaningful. Keep going down. Keep going down. Let's let's see if there's any other interesting comments. Oh, scroll up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's funny. Drink more beer. I do miss beer. All right, let's keep going down. Oh, there. That's interesting. Eat more pickles. So just by like, if I have a deadline and I've got to write an article like all the time, 3.1 million people in the, are in this community. And the second top post that week was about electrolytes being the cure. And apparently, that, that, to me, that means that probably a lot of people who are keto have an, uh, like feel, feel down and electrolytes is the cure. Isn't, and you guys see how easy that is now to come up with like an idea of like, oh, boom, that's an interesting idea. So let's do, um, go to some of the, do I have any links in here about my examples? So I'm gonna give you guys some examples, how I use this for me. Does this make sense? It's like so stupid easy, I know, but like I do this every day, all day. So, all right, here's a, here's a good example. I'm a member of Home Gym. 560,000 people who care about just building these like gyms at their house. It's like pretty niche community, but that's 550,000 people. That's amazing. And by the way, for the keto idea, if you become a member of that community, eventually you start posting your stuff there and that's how you get track, uh, traffic. So look, check this out. Scroll up. I just saw this yesterday. I just turned 15 and bought myself this outdoor training area. I'm happy with the amount of equipment I got for summer. So it looks like this kid got a bench press and a cage. All right, cool. What's the first comment? Hold on. Oh, this. I saw this comment. Is, is your equipment water, waterproof or rust proof? Thinking about getting something similar to put outside that can handle all that weather. That's the second most upvoted comment on that po post. What article should we write? Rust proof equipment. Yeah, people have that question. Isn't that interesting? Like, like they just told them. They just told us that that's what they want to know. Now scroll down. I didn't actually look at this, but let's see. Oh, there's no more comments on it. Uh, I thought maybe they'd be like, oh, you know, I love this brand. They're, they make the best rust proof. But there, we just found an interesting way to come up with an idea. What else, let me let me see what the other examples are. No, let's go to a different one. Oh, yeah, here. All right, here's another good one. So, um, so here's another way to look at comments. So I like to use Reddit because there's a subreddit for everything. But uh, for the person who has, was there someone who does, uh, I'm sorry, what was your business again? Yeah. So we train nannies, type of nannies. Is there a forum or place online? I bet there is, I would bet my life, there's a nanny thing for, on Reddit. Is there a place where people have discussions about nannies? Like uh, probably Facebook groups? Is that it, Facebook groups? Yeah. So here's an interesting way that I like to find other ideas. So there's this, um, in a different tab, open up that mean people fail. Uh, so. Thank you. All right. There's this guy named Paul Graham. I love his work. Paul Graham started Y Combinator. He writes these essays. I think they're great. He wrote this essay in 2014. It's called Me, People, Fail. It struck me recently how few of the most successful people I know are mean. There are exceptions, but remarkably few. I love this article. It was so fun and inspired me. And so I was like, I want to write about this. What are some interesting ideas on how I could approach that? So what you could do and what I tend to do is I copy and paste the URL. And I know that like computer nerds, like my people, we hang out on this website called Hacker News. Does anyone read Hacker News? It's an awesome website. In your example, it could be a Facebook group or it could be this subreddit. And what I like to do is I like to pay, copy and paste and I put the link into all these places that the people hang out. And I like to see who has submitted that article and what they're saying. So for example, scroll up, this is on Hacker News. They said, he posted this, someone posted this article, it got 489 upvotes, and he says, perhaps, they call him PG, his name's Paul Graham, perhaps Paul Graham and I have different understanding of the word mean, but I doubt it is as opposing as a word he uses to describe the founders as good people. These are the ones that come to mind. Apple and Steve Jobs is a huge asshole. 
Facebook and Zuck completely fucked over his mates with money, it appears. Microsoft and Bill Gates is ruthless. Oracle, Larry Davison Ellison, Zynga, Mark Pingus, Uber, they're complete jerks. Kim.com, enough said. And they go on to have this like interesting opinion, whether I agree or not, if it's true, it's like an interesting take. And then scroll down. Look at this, keep scrolling. There's this huge conversation about like arguing if mean people can win or cannot win. And what I wrote, I wrote an article about this that I, uh, I no, we don't need to go to it. But my, what I did with this is I wrote an article saying that like, um, it was like, uh, is nice guys finish last actually like true? Or, or, or another example is like, here's 10 examples of, of horrible people just absolutely crushing it. Or, you know what I mean? Like, you can come up with all these cool ideas because I know that there's this sentiment that Paul Graham, said, who's a popular person in this article, resonated with people. I know there's an article of him saying mean people fail. Then I know there's a whole bunch of people say, no, that's nonsense. Here's six examples of how these guys were all jerks and they succeeded. So in my head, I'm like, okay, there's this sentiment here that people actually care about that. What's my take on it? Does that make sense about how I would come up with a new idea? All right, let's go to another one. No, uh, sorry, a different slide. So I love reading uh, Reddit comments. I also love reading news sites comments. You know how people say like uh, news, news comments are like the cesspool of the internet? <laughs> They're kind of right, but I enjoy reading them because I get a lot of interesting ideas. You, gotta, you just got to ignore a bunch of them. So I love looking at, it's the same thing as Reddit, but I like looking at news sites. So uh, there was an interesting one. So yesterday, Ken Griffin, his, I don't know much about finance, but Ken Griffin is this finance guy, and he had a large, like, m worth tens of billions of dollars hedge fund located in Chicago, and then he moved it to Florida. And that was really controversial because the conservatives said, oh, wow, you see, Chicago has got so much crime, it really sucks. The liberals said, like, Ken, you punk, like, you know, I don't know what, it, you, you guys understand, like, it's a very predictable conversation that they're gonna have. But uh, let's just say that I'm, I write and I'm trying to attract a political audience. So I went to that Wall Street Journal article and the very top comment says, Chicago is an, an excellent example of a city completely ruined by idiot liberals. So now wh who cares if this is right or wrong or who cares if what you guys believe, this, we're just, this is totally objective, we're just looking at this as an idea. Uh, when the money, uh, so they're saying that like liberal cities are run poorly. And that comment was the top comment and it had 129 upvotes. So if I want to write something interesting, it's like, well, this is in the news that people are leaving Chicago to go to Florida because they think that liberal and high crime and Florida means conservative and less crime. We should actually dive deeper on this. And so an interesting article is like, do liberal cities have more crime? Or do conservative cities have less crime? That's like an interesting, an interesting idea that we should pursue. And I have with a high degree of certainty that that's gonna resonate with people and that's gonna get viewed. Does that make sense? All right, let's go to the next one. Oh no, scroll up. Uh, go to the comment section. No, I had a, I had a more. I don't want to open it. Um, no. Here, all right, here it is. Now, when I was talking to Nathan, I was talking to him. Is Nathan in here? I thought he just came in here. I was talking to Nathan that when I cut, we were talking about his blog. So Nathan has this blog called like the Billion Dollar Blog. Has anyone read that? Beautiful headline. It's a, it's a really good headline. I think it's like, the, is it, what's it called? Does someone remind me? Is it the billion dollar creator? Yeah, it's an amazing headline. I love that. And oftentimes, it's important that you have to start with the headline. And this is something that a lot of creators, they refuse to do because they think like, but I'm spending all my time writing on it and like, I don't want it to be clickbait, clickbait and I get it. I understand that point. But the truth is, go to the next one. When you're scrolling through Facebook, when you're scrolling through Twitter, like, you always are gonna read this headline first. And if you have a, if you have a thousand, a pe hundred people see your headline and it sucks 
and only 0.1% of people click it, that's like no one, versus you have a 5% click-through rate, that's five more people. Now imagine if those numbers are like a million, like it really starts adding up. Your headlines are actually the most important thing, on, like it or not, they are the most important thing. And so whenever I have an article, I think which headline will get the most popular and how do I write an article around that? You can go to the next one. And I'm gonna show you uh, how to do that. Uh, the biggest thing is you have to start with an emotion. So there's a bunch of different uh, emotions that trigger people to share. The ones that uh, do best are awe and anger. Those do best. Oh, I was supposed to ask you which ones do the worst. <laughs> Sadness is the work. Sadness is the worst. Anything that's depressing never gets shared. Remember those like Sarah McLaughlin commercials? <laughs> Fuck those ads. I hate those ads. I turn the TV off right away. I'm like, I don't want to watch that. It's too sad. It makes me, it, it like depresses me. I don't even want to be part of it. We have a rule at our house that like, if there's a movie where the protagonist is a dog, I don't see it because that dog is always going to die. <laughs> I don't do sad stuff. Sad stuff doesn't share. Anger and awe, it, do, it gets the best type of sh shares. So that type of stuff always does best. Yeah. So, hold on. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. So, I've got this guy, his name's, um, his name's Zach Crockett. Have, has anyone ever heard of Zach Crockett? All right, so Zach Crockett works at The Hustle. He writes, um, we did this thing called the Sunday email. And he basically, I talked to Zach, Zach has worked for me for five years now. He's my longest working employee. I've had like six conversations ever with him. <laughs> I've met him in person like twice. I can't tell you anything about him. He's very private. Zach goes into his hole every week and he comes out with magic almost every single week. He is the best person I have ever been around and I've met a lot of writers at writing amazing headlines and amazing articles that get shared like crazy. I've never met anyone like this. You guys gotta look them up. Am I exaggerating this stuff? No. <laughs> huh? What's, what's Zach do every single week? We've talked about this before, and I have a mic now, um, that one of the hardest skills to teach is having a sense of what people find interesting, and Zach is probably the best at that of anyone I've met. He's without a doubt the best. I don't, like, I can't teach what he does. Like, I'm in awe of what he does. I'm gonna show you a few of his headlines. So at almost every article he writes, what, what does he add? What, probably, he probably gets like 300,000 page views for everything he writes. Oh yeah, I think probably higher on average. Pro it could be as high as half a million. So every time he writes an article, half a million people go and read it and he does one a week. He doesn't miss. He's missed maybe a couple times, but like literally 52 times a year he makes this come out, and each article is between 1,000 and 3,000 words. The guy's a machine. He's crazy, and I don't ever talk to him. We talk like on Slack, like, hey, Zach, what's up? He goes, hi, good, and he just, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the most interesting thing. Like, no one talks about this, but like, I don't own the business anymore, so I don't mind like bragging about him because I didn't want anyone to poach him because he was like our secret weapon. Now we can like talk about him. But anyway, he is the best at writing these headlines. He comes up with the most interesting headlines and they're always full of emotions. And he asks like the most, uh, he'll, he'll ask the ba uh, very basic and wonderful questions to come up with interesting content. And I'm gonna explain how. So this article is one of his most popular articles. The man feeding a remote Alaska town with a Costco card and a ship. So this is a story about a guy who like basically built a business where he, uh, there was like this rem remote town in Alaska and he would just go back and forth with like a bunch of Costco stuff and like sell it at a small premium and, and built a business. And every time people read Zach's content, I, every time I read it, I'm in awe about like what he just discovered. And that's why it gets shared. I'm constantly in awe with his work. Uh, you want to show another one of his? How do you feel when you read that headline? Is that crazy? <laughs> so the man who, and I'm gonna show you how he comes up with these ideas in a second, but the man who won the lottery 14 times. And he does, and Zach makes his own images. So he actually makes all these. I don't even know how he does it. I think he does it in Photoshop. Is he use Photoshop? Yeah. Yeah, he just, 
he's, I, he just like literally is like in a hole and then on Friday night he comes out and he goes, hey, it's done, it's uploaded, I'll talk to you Monday. Like that's just how it works. Uh, and he like crushes it with all these, uh, these awe-inducing headlines. He kills it on these. This one I think was viewed a couple million times actually. You can go to the next one. Here's another one. This is an, so uh, I have been on a long tear about this. I think buying a home is a horrible financial decision. How many people disagree with me? Yeah, you probably want to punch me in the face, right? You're probably like, you're so effing wrong, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the point. I want you to do that because then you're going to come and read this. And so like these are topics that you're able to find and you're like, what gets some people riled up? And I, I think, um, I mean, I think it's, I just think it's a bad idea buying a home. That's, and that's okay if people disagree with me. But what I like to do is find these headlines that have like, make people kind of angry. Now you could, I, uh, I knew some guys who used to uh, own websites that were news websites and they're either really far left or far right. I hate that stuff. So you could take it that far and go do one of that, to be honest. And like this whole thing about fake news and like manipulating people, that's real. Like I know people who do that. Um, so you could take that to an extreme and anger people. So like don't use that. Don't, I don't think you should use this, a bit, this that way. And when I say anger, I, it's more so like, I think I've got a solid argument for this. I'm sure you have a solid argument for why I'm wrong, but like we're not going to fight over it. So, so I like doing like these 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 are these types of angry things that I love. And then here, uh, this is the last one. Check out that hi that headline. Losers exist. Don't hire them. <laughs> is that a brilliant headline? That's another anger-inducing headline. I love that headline. And uh, I agree with this guy's article. Uh, this guy was written by this guy named Brian. And, he, and the whole point of the article is he, when he, he goes, when I interview people, I want to talk to them about what they're passionate about. Like maybe um, I don't really care about their skills because everyone else on my team has already interviewed them and asked them all about skills. I mo more so care when I, I want to ask about their care. I want to figure out about their, their passion. And so I'll ask them about the bottom fourth of the resume. So I'll ask them what they care about, uh, like what they studied at school and what their favorite class was in school. Because if you went to school for four years and studied philosophy and you can't entertain me about some like philosophical thing or you can't tell me why your favorite teacher was Mrs. Blank because she was such a good gym teacher and like you can't like tell me a story about that, then you're just a loser. I don't want to be around you. That's his point. Uh, a lot of people disagree with that. And so what you can do is type that article in and, uh, and uh, th th there's a bunch of commentary on why they wildly disagree with it. But you know what? This article was viewed like 600 times, 600,000 times, because a lot of people were angry about it because it was a, not that controversial of opinion, but it was an anger-inducing headline, an anger-inducing blog. So the way that you come up with these ideas, I showed you how to look at Reddit and I showed you how to look at news. I like doing that. The thing that Zach does really well, and I tend to do this uh, decently, is focusing on one idea out of a big thing. So oftentimes we call it the big idea or we call it the hook. So I'll have a conversation with someone and they'll tell me, and I'm like trying to find an interview and I'll sit through talking to them for like 40 minutes and it's like boring, 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 boring. And then they say one line, I'm like, huh? What? Okay, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. And so when going through a lot of like, when I'm spending my day coming up with interesting ideas, if I have a deadline the next day, I'll just read loads and loads and loads and loads of websites and I'll find one sentence that's amazing and I'll write a whole blog on that sentence. And I'm gonna show you a few examples. So this is the, before we launched the hustle, we, we had HustleCon. And this is the very first article that I wrote for HustleCon. This article, I remember it ruined our website because I didn't know how to like, set, I was just using Go, GoDaddy and I posted this on um, Reddit and this had uh, like 100,000 people on our website at one time or something like crazy like that. This got viewed well over a million people. And the reason I came up with this is, uh, this guy's name is Tim Westergen. Uh, there's this company called Pandora, they're, they're awesome. but. Um, Tim Westergen gave this 50 minute talk about how he started Pandora. And there was one line at the very end, and you can actually find it on video. Uh, do, do we have a link to it or no? That's all right if we don't. There's, it's a 50 minute video. And I think like on minute 46, someone asked him a question. So basically, um, 
four or, or 10 minutes into his talk, he was like, we were so broke that our employees worked for free for eight years. And um, I used to have to give this speech all the time to them, convincing them why they should continue working here. And then he like moved on past that and he like started talking about some, something else. And I heard that and I was like, the fuck, you convince 50 people to work for two years without pay? How on earth did you do that? And someone in the stage said, can you give that speech that you gave, that, that you said you had to give every single week? And he goes, oh man, I gotta think about that. And he like gave the speech and it was like a minute or a minute and a half long speech. And I was like, I'm ready to go work for you for two years. Like I was amazed by that. <laughs> and that is an example of like, he gave me 50 minutes of content, but I would just look, I would just look for one hook. Because I knew that induced awe. I was like, that, that I, the way that I felt, that, that's the article. And so I made that article, and I posted that on Reddit, on the Today I Learned. Today I Learned that Pandora's founder convinced 50 early employees to work for two years without pay. Which, by the way, a lot of people are angry about that, and they go, oh, this effing CEO didn't pay people for two years. Whatever, that's cool. They can be angry about that. It got more views. Um, and so that's an example of like, there's this big long thing and I just always try to find these small nuggets and I do this constantly, all day. I'll just wake up in the morning, be on my phone on Twitter, someone posted an interesting article and like I scroll through and it's like, you'll, you'll find all the, just like one line. You're like, ooh, that, that's an interesting take. That's an interesting line. I'm gonna expand that. Here's some more examples. Oh, I told you about this one. Um, this was the, the article that I wrote about Steve Harvey's card and how he was set up to fail. This crushed it. This got so many views. Um, so go back. Look at the card. It was actually pretty crazy. Uh, so look, like that's the winner. Isn't that crazy how like actually hard that is? To, and, and second runner up, that actually means third place. That's already weird. But like, it's like a weird way of reading that. And I was like, oh, that's shocking. I'm shocked at that, that that was the card. This is another Zach article, why, why America has so few carpenters. This was read by, uh, this, was, um, this was seen by hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people and he came up with this article because I think he was interviewing someone, I forget what he was interviewing someone about, but he was just interviewing an entrepreneur about starting a construction business uh, or no, he was interviewing someone about building franchises, I think. He was talking about building franchises and the franchisee said like, like Chick-fil-A things or McDonald's things. And the, like he was, it was like, the, the original idea was like, how much money does a McDonald's owner make? Which is actually awesome, that would have worked. Uh, but the McDonald's owner must have said something like, yeah, but like, you know, it's taking three years to build a McDonald's um, because there's so few carpenters and Zach was like, Oh, that's interesting. Tell me about that. And he like d went really deep on that one thing. And Zach does it by interviewing people. The, to be honest though, you can do it just by browsing YouTube and podcasts. Uh, and you just find like these little tidbits in a 60 minute podcast and you write a whole article on that. We can do a few more examples. Keep going. And wait, go back. Wait, who, you wanna read that one? <laughs> The lucrative, this is a class exact headline. The lucrative economics of blank. He does that constant, constantly. If you Google the economics of and then Zachary Crockett, you'll probably find 30 articles like that. Do you think of this as being associated with an emotion? Uh, well, that ha first of all, the reason, I, the reason I picked that example, you don't even remember, but I, I said like, you will read this first, then you will read this, and then you will read this. So when you're sharing stuff on Twitter and on Facebook and things like that, the things that you see first, you first see this, then you read the H1, then you read the depth heard trial was the latest courtroom. So this does cause an emotion, but it's not just the headline that does the writing, it's that picture. And that's another thing that creators often really screw up, is they don't know how to use the right pictures. The right pictures make a world of difference. So uh, you asked, does that, what, it, what was the question? So you're talking about like, trying to draw things into different emotions, but this one to me seems just like curiosity or something. Curiosity is a great way to get, yes. Curiosity is one of the best. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So we'll do a bunch of questions, but really quick, um, how many slides are left? I think this is. So one thing that we didn't talk about was how to become a better writer. That's a fairly complicated topic, but there is one really easy way to do that. Is anyone here a musician? What do you play? Guitar. Guitar. You're really good, huh? <laughs> Your first uh, six months, what was like a what, what type of practice did you do? I loved the Beatles when I was a kid, so I bought a Beatles fake book, and I literally just learned all my favorite songs. You're, you walked right into my trap. Thank you. <laughs> The way that we learn musician, how to play an instrument, is we copy other people. So you bought a Beatles album and you said like, my- A fake book. A what? A fake book. A fake? A bunch of charts. A bunch of charts. Yeah, so you, you copied the Beatles. You played the Beatles. You imitated them. I learned the chords and song structure and stuff. You learned the Beatles chord structure. And then what did you learn when, while doing that? Songs I could play for my friends. And you start seeing patterns. Yeah. And you're like, wow, like they use this pattern all the time. That's why that song is so catchy. And you start like seeing that, right? Uh, my brother, John, he is a musician. And I remember him when he, he wanted to learn, he bought a bunch of, we like we would record on our VCR like a Green Day live concert. And he would like press pause and like zoom in. He's like, oh, there's where he's putting his fingers. And like then he was like, that's how Green Day plays. And um, that's how we all learn how to play musician, uh, music. So you, pretty much anyone who can know nothing about the piano, and you come in and you sit down at a piano, and just give it like eight weeks, ev practice every day for three hours, and you're, first you're gonna play like whatever, Jingle Bells, Happy Birthday, and then like you'll find, you'll like move on to something a little bit more complicated, and then eventually you'll play the Beatles, and you're like, wow, all these pop songs are kind of like this. That's why they all have that like, pop sound, that's actually interesting. And then you do that for three years or two years, and then you're like, now I'm gonna write my own song. And I know that what, I know like kinda how to write my own song because I know the Beatles all did this thing. And then Chuck Berry, who influenced the Beatles, he wrote this way, and I think that's pretty cool. I'm kinda gonna combine that, I'm gonna add in a little bit of like hip hop somehow, I'm gonna make this like cool thing. With writing, that's the best way to learn. It's incredibly effective. The way that we, we learn uh, instruments is like super effective, like it's, it just works all the time. With writing, that's also the best way, but most people don't do it. And so what I, the way that I learned how to write, there's this way that they used to teach people how to write. It was called uh, copy work. Has anyone ever heard of copy work? A few of you. So copy work, you just do exactly what he did with the Beatles. You find writers that you love, and you literally write it word for word by hand. So the way that I learned how to write was I took The Catcher in the Rye, because I liked that book. I took a bunch of SNL, uh, I took a bunch of SNL skits, because like, and then I took like, I don't, I don't even remember, like some movie like Knocked Up or something like that. Because I was like, I wanna, I wanna know about humor writing. I'm curious how they do that. And I just like, and then I took um, a bunch of blog articles that I wrote, or that I liked, you know, like famous, um, and I literally just copied it every single day. I spent an hour just copying it. And you start seeing patterns. You start to be like, oh, wow, Salinger, like, when he does it this way, it, like, I feel this emotion. That's an interesting way to make people feel that. Or like, wow, Steinbeck only uses short sentences, and he, there's never a word that with more than three syllables. How interesting. And yet, I feel this very complex emotion, but he's explaining things in a very simple way. That's a great way to learn how to write. And so what I challenge you guys to do is whenever you're, you're getting ready to write an article, I think you should do this anyway, if you're, whether you're writing an article or not, is just spend a few hours, 30 minutes, 20 minutes every day just doing copy work. But right before you sit down and write something, think about who you want to sound like, go and find something that they've written, and just spend like five or 10 minutes and just write out how they write so you get in the groove. And then that kind of helps get the flow going for when you're going to write something else. It's like a secret that not a lot of people talk about. It works awesome. So it's like when you're warming up to play something on guitar, like. You're playing the Beatles, and you're like, huh, 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 all right, all right. And then, like, so you don't actually have, it's kind of like motion creates emotions. You know, like, have you ever heard that phrase? Like, when you move around, then you start feeling stuff. It's like, well, if I just play this, I'm, gonna, I, I'm in the, mo I'm not thinking of what I have to play. I'm just playing someone else's stuff. And now I'm, like, getting in the groove and feeling a little better. Now I can do my own thing. It works wonderfully for writing. Um, all right, let's do, uh, let's do some questions and answers, and we'll try to dive deep. We got a, a lot of interesting th stuff, I hope. What's up? Thank you so much, Roman. It's like low right now, but I need you to connect the dot for me. So I was at like, the previous session, and you were talking about the shake and the diet that you did when you were first starting. Soylent. 
Slip math for nerds. So, yeah, I'll explain. So, uh, you just Google it. You want to Google it or no? You don't want to Google Google the Hustle Soylent. The website looks a lot different now than what it used to then, but here's why. And once I sold the company, I, I don't own the company anymore, so I don't know how people have changed it. There's the article I wrote in 2015. Back then, this picture was like way bigger and it like created way more emotions. But anyway, here's the headline. Soylent, what happened when I went 30 days without food? And so, again, the website when I ran it looked a lot different, but that's an email box, okay? The way that I used to write this, when I wrote it, it was like pretty funny. It said, um, oh my God, not another pop-up. Okay, look, the pop-up's already here and you're already here, so just give it a minute and let me tell you something. You see, this website that you're on, it's called The Hustle. It's a uh, daily news, it's a daily news, what a, uh, a daily newsletter, and we create crazy stuff like this article you're reading all the time. We'll send you one of our emails tomorrow, and if you don't like it, just hit unsubscribe, and if you hate it, just email me and I'll Venmo you a dollar. Like I would just say like silly stuff like that. And 3% of people would give me their email. And so this article got 500,000 people. So 500,000 of, that's 15,000 people, right? So that's how we grew up. And so we just did that all the time. Now, what I said earlier, I was like, I can't do this soiling crap all the time. Like, I can't come up with that many ideas. And so I, that only worked until like 100,000 people, but that was a good start. And so I would write all these articles. Here, scroll down. This is actually, the, uh, God, they, it got ruined. There used to be like, <laughs> there used to be like these amazing pictures. Yeah, that's, so this is my friend uh, Josh in like day one. His farts are awful. <laughs> Keep scrolling. I mean, they, we used to have these like big pictures of him. It was an amazing article. And uh, uh, basically, he, this is my friend Josh. He's the one who did it, but I wrote the article. He would just tell me how he feels and I would just write it. I did this another time. Google Steve Garcia, the hustle. So here's another thing that we did. We used to do this stuff all the time. Uh, do, uh, do uh, the hustle, uh, uh, yeah. It's there. Right there? All right, so check this out. Oh wait, no, where's the one where, go back, go back. Click that top one, it says Steve Garcia author. What the fuck, is that it, Steph? I don't know. Oh, whatever, that's all right, click that one. So, my friend, I have a friend who had depression and he started to try micro, do micro dosing LSD. Um, also, uh, I don't do LSD or uh, MDMA, I'm sorry, I don't even know the right words, but, uh, and it helped him feel better and he took small amounts. But he was like, I don't wanna put my name out there. And I was like, yeah, but, I almost said his name. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jake, this is uh, such a good article. Like, I need to write this article. Uh, and he goes, all right, well, just like, you can, I was, he's like, well, why do you want this? I'm like, because I took LSD for 30 days to help cure my, my depression is like the greatest headline of all time. I have to write that. And he was like, well, okay, you could write that, but you can't use my name. So Steve Garcia, that stands for Steve Jobs and Jerry Garcia. That's me. So I'm Steve Garcia. And I used to write, I think when we were selling to HubSpot, I, I deleted a bunch of these articles. But we wrote this whole series on how he felt week after week of taking this, how he was buying it online, some of the stuff that he was going through, how he like figured out the dosage that worked for him. Because that's like a no-brainer. I mean, everyone's going to read that. And so, and I used to use fake, uh, fake names. I have another guy named Sid Finch. Uh, that was another one of my names. Steph Whitfield was another one. Uh, Steve Garcia, I used to have all these names and I would write all these articles because I would hear someone just having a conversation and like this woman, uh, I was talking to my friend, this woman, and she was like, these fucking guys are hitting on me on LinkedIn. And I'm like, really? They think that's gonna work? Like what? That's, cr that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. That's A, that's horrible for you. And B, like what kind of an idiot would do that? 
And uh, she's like, and then like, there's other women in the group, and they're like, yeah, it happens all the time to us. And I'm like, that is crazy. I'm writing about that. So I, had, I wrote about that, but it had to be from a woman's point of view. So hence, Steph Whitfield. Uh, Can someone tell us how much time we have? Do we know? All right, we'll keep answering questions until we get kicked off. Sorry, I'm rambling. Hopefully that <laughs> answered you. Yeah. Super helpful. Um, what about the chicken and egg problem about building an audience and blogging? So you have a small audience, you want to start blogging, but no one's going to find you if you're not doing the I'm going to show you a real life example. Can, is... can I add to that? As opposed to writing on a social media platform like Twitter, which is kind of a lot of the rage, like go, go write where the people are yeah. versus writing on your own blog. You always got to do that. But here, watch this. I'm going to try and find one of the very, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to find a perfect real life example. This is very bold of me to be doing this in front of everyone, to be searching a computer. Stay straight. Everyone already saw my, uh, my Reddit name, Pizza Lady. I didn't think that was going to get out there. <laughs> All right, check this out. Here's a real life example. I just want to show you that I'm not full of shit and I practice what I preach. Um, all right. so. This was seven years ago, uh, chicken and egg. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your entire question because I was trying to find this, but I think it is going to answer it. I didn't have an audience. I hosted this event in 2000 and, uh, seven years ago, 15. My email list was 50, 50 people then. It was no one. So I basically, scroll up, Sarah. This was our. Uh, this is an uh, entrepreneur subreddit. It has 1.3 million. Back then, it probably had 500,000. Big enough. I, uh, I, I said, I, uh, Stitch Fix is this amazing company that um, it's like, uh, you know, you guys know what that is, right? You like uh, clothing. Yeah, they send you new clothes every month. I use it too. Um, the woman who started it spoke at one of my events. Her name's Katrina Lake. She's amazing. It's like a $6 billion company. And she didn't have a technical founder. She spent zero dollars on marketing, and like it was worth like a three hundred. They raised it like a three hundred million dollar valuation in like three years. Easy story to tell, right? Uh, and I didn't have an audience though, so I said I wrote a post on how Katrina Lake, the founder of Stitch Fix, grew her company from zero to one hundred fifty million in revenue in three years. I'll post the entire blog below so you don't have to click off. But I wanted to share it here because I was really excited writing it. Here's why I liked her story, and I put bullet points. And then, um, and then, if you want to see the original post, which includes videos and an infographic, it's here. But scroll down. I just posted the whole thing in there, and then I put the link again at the bottom. And then, I got shit on a fair bit. <laughs> scroll down. So, oh, cool. No one. No one is making fun of me here. I mean, they like, don't write my wording, but like, some people scroll down. Look at all the comments I got on this. Someone might, I, think, I thought some people made fun of me for self-promoting. But, but look at all this conversation. Just keep scrolling. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I didn't have an audience there when I did that. So I, but, here, get out of there. You can uh, go back. Um, I didn't have an audience when I did that. But if you do that 10 times a week, you start getting an audience really fast. And so I did that a whole bunch of times. And two weeks after like, starting the blog, I, we were already at like 1,000 or 2,000 visits a day. And then occasionally would have like, these huge hits, like the Soylent post, and that would go viral. It would basically it would look like this. It would be like, Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Huge spike, comes back down, but it plateaus a little bit higher than before. Go, go, go. Huge up, then it might go down for a little while. Then another huge up. You know what I mean? Does that answer your question? Yeah. What about doing it on Twitter? Twitter plus? Yeah, back then that wasn't a thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Worth it. Worth it. Well, what's your, when you're doing that Reddit stuff, do you, or do you like that? Yeah, the handle, well, don't. Yeah, but not always. In that example, yes. I like to have different personas. 
Um, because like I was, when I read Ben Franklin's biography, Ben Franklin used to have a newspaper. And when you're just like a rookie newspaper guy, and it's just you, you don't want people to think, you want, you want, you want to be bigger than you are. So you've got to make up fake authors and stuff like that. So I would do that too. So I would have like personas like, she believes this, he's from New York, he does this, she does this, and I would have like interesting personas and I would write from that perspective. Like, like four different Reddit accounts and you'd be jumping around? Yeah, but I wasn't like gaming the system. I was like doing it all the right way, but, I, but like it's pretty common to have like four or five different Reddit, like I have one Reddit now where like maybe one of them is like mostly sports stuff. Another one is like mostly city-based stuff. Another one's politics, you know what I mean? Right, so you're just uh, commenting as that persona when you're in that account. Yeah, just like different perspectives of my, different parts of my personality. Okay. You know what I mean? So like right now, like one of my Reddit handles is very public, it has my name. I'm not gonna be an asshole about it. Then I have another one that's like, where I will say, I have another one that's anonymous and I will say controversial opinions, things like that. Do those still lead back to your site that you're trying to promote? Yeah, but then eventually, once you get, once you start getting some traction, people just start posting your stuff for you there. But yeah, yes, I would, I would. Would it be that same persona on the website? Well, the, the click-through is just what you gave the URL to the article to get them to go to the hustle, right? It's yeah. not the persona that they're looking into. Yeah, like it wasn't necessarily the, you're asking, the author yeah, the same, the, yeah, the same author isn't all. Half the time I would, half the time I would. Sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I'd be like, oh, I just wrote this amazing article. And like sometimes there's like, you can't even submit, like there's a subreddit called Today I Learned, T-I-L. And like I would like, and it, you just post amazing facts. But like you just link right off to an article, there's no place to even comment. I would like write lots of articles and I'd post them all over places. And then if I found one that was good, I'd be like, oh, I gotta submit this to, T -I, uh, to Today I Learned. And like sometimes they just would, most of the time it would go to zero. Every once in a while it just took off. I don't know how much it impacted you or whatever, but like early on when you're trying to self promote stuff, did you ever get impacted by reactions to you or bashing on like your motivations? Yeah. How did you deal with that? Uh, you things? you got to ruffle some feathers if you want to make it big time. Of course, the guy you asked uh, if I got if people gave me a lot of backlash. Yes, I get made fun of consistently. I bet you twenty. Percent of the audience of my last talk thought I was a douchebag. Yes, of course. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I got it all the time. Every once in a while, something would get to me, and I would be laying in the living room floor. I'd be like, Sarah, this sucks. I'm quitting. I can't do this. Uh, uh, yeah, it gets me. Yeah, it doesn't get to me a lot. Does it get to me? So I guess the question is, like, how did you deal with that and and stick to your guns that way? Like, did you just? I would try to um, ask myself, are they right or are they not right? So like, am I self-promoting too much? Let's try to look at this. Like, do I believe, am I doing the right thing? Would I be embarrassed to talk about this at a conference? You know what I mean? And typically if I'd be too embarrassed, I'd be like, mm, I don't know if I wanna do this. But like, I'm okay breaking, I, I try never to break the law. I'm okay breaking some rules though. <laughs> I'll break a rule. I don't wanna break a law though. But and I don't want to do anything that is like low integrity, but like having multiple per personas, I don't think is low integrity. Uh, let's do it in the back and then in the front. When it comes to, you, you talked about writing like 10 articles a week and then you have your guy Zach at Hustle and he was writing really well-researched articles. How do you balance like observational content versus informational content, especially when you're trying to have like domain authority around a certain subject? Well, that's why I was ex trying to explain there's two different, there's like different, like I make a decision. It's not like this bucket only and this bucket only, but like I do kind of like, you kind of know uh, ahead if it's gonna be like a domain authority or like I'm trying to be authoritative or I'm just trying to explain a pin. Is that what you're asking? If it's like which one's a? Well, yeah, I mean, but you've got people, creators here have certain niches, fitness, you know, sports. You know, you, look, you talked about Motley Fool making $600,000 a year off of, you know, financial. 600 million. Oh, 600 million, sorry. Uh, you know, in financial advice, those articles must have been extremely well researched. Oh, for sure. So then how do you crank out those articles at a volume, you know, that is getting you the click-through rates you need? Uh, or do you oh, well, you have, you pick and choose. So if you're a Motley Fool, like, they're paid newsletters. I don't, they don't submit, they have like some that are every day. Like, like we, you have like, um, this is just how you run like an editorial division. You have like, all right, this is like just our quick hitters. But then like for Motley Fool, for example, what I think they do is um, 
they like have a team of analysts and they're like, all right, whenever we find something that our people need to know, we'll tell them. And sometimes that's like only once a month. But then it's just like, here's the news every day that you need to know. So you just have to like, you could decide like where, what bucket that falls into. So it's like um, for the, the hustle, every day we send you something because that's just like news that we don't need to analyze too much. But then trends is actually once a week and that's far more data driven. We actually could do that once a month, I bet, and get just as good of a result. But we kind of like, you, we, you can't make a lot of that like high in-depth stuff. That's why I said that Soylent stuff that I was doing, I couldn't, I, I couldn't have done that. I, can, I, 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 I did it for a year and I was like, I don't have any more tricks. Like, uh, uh, like Mr. Beast, he's doing it, but he's gonna, yeah. that's gonna fail eventually, or he's gonna, that will fail, then he'll probably figure out a new way. But anyway, I make decisions as to like, what's, like the, what's the purpose of this. Okay, so it's okay to supplement your content with, you know. Hell yeah, and that's actually something that I think people don't, that people do incorrectly. What's your guys' company, Genius Inc? Genius Inc, yeah. Link? Link, yeah. What do you make? Uh, we make a like link management software, but we try to inform our our audience about affiliate marketing and. So one thing that people like you, like B two B people, don't do that they should do is talk more about their personal lives, like, uh, uh, like uh, my name is Derek. I'm the CEO of uh, Genius Link. Um, these 18 books shaped my life. I think, and I actually think people should, should do more of that. Because, yeah, for small teams, like, that's been hard for us to try to find the time to write content, but then not write fluff pieces, maybe. You know, we want to make sure that we're giving people Dude, value. fluff pieces are cool. In your email, you should be like, let, let's just say that, like, your, let's just say, like, your email is, like, all business. I have no idea what that would be. Like, here's the best links, or what's a, what would you say? Here's a good affiliate network. Here's a good affiliate network. In the intro, just to be like, hey, what's going on? I'm writing this email from Brooklyn, New York, where I'm here for my sister's wedding, and I just walked into this bodega, and they have this thing called a CBD drink. Look, I live in Boise. We don't ever see CBD drinks. I don't know, man. Maybe I should give this a try. Well, let's see if this feels any good. Talk to you tomorrow. Let's get into today's email. <laughs> like, stuff like that. Like, that, like, people would love you if you did that. Plus in the hustle, you guys used to have segments like the best deals on the internet this week, and you would have, I don't know, diff different things like that. Yeah, that do. so like we were a tech and business news, but we would do stuff all the time. Like for example, like one time, like I bought this pen and notebook that was made in Japan. It was like the best piece of paper and best like pen that I've ever bought in my life. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna talk about it. Or like, I'm a huge fan of, I collect denim, fancy denim. Like vintage denim, like I like old stuff. Like there'll be a thousand dollars, you don't even wear it. You like put it in a frame, and uh, it's like a museum artifact type of thing. It's a weird hobby, and like I've just been like, that's what I'll say. Like, hey, do you guys know? Like, have you guys ever thought about denim? Well, I bet you haven't. Or no, like, oh, I know you haven't. But guess what? I think about it all the day. The reason I love it is for these reasons, and it's actually really cool. Here's a whole article that explains why it's kind of neat. And like, in fact, a pair of old Levi's just sold for thirty thousand dollars that they found in a mine. Check it out. All right, today, let's get let's get today's stuff. Like things like that, I would do that all the time. Uh, yeah. What else? Any more questions? Mine's a very practical one, so very simple. But when it comes to copy work, does it matter doing it by hand versus typing? I think yes. I have no way of proving that. <laughs> I say always do it by hand just because that's what felt good to me <laughs> what say it again 100 do it by hand if you can do it in cursive on online paper St talk loud stand up stand up yes do it by hand here here you go brother this is important <laughs> nathan didn't ask me to speak this time uh do it by hand preferably using cursive, if you remember that ancient art form. Uh, and then you do it on online paper, helps with spatial awareness as well. But the easiest thing to do is just do print, but 100% do not type it. No any of the same benefit. It sounds like you know what, what about copy work. Yes. Tell them, tell people, because I, 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 I know it feels good. Yeah. It sounds like you actually know the science. It's literally the simplest way to become a better writer ever. Anything you want to do, just hand copy it. Find great emails, find great blogs. I used to do the same thing as you. I'd take Jack Reacher novels and I'd write them by hand. Take comedians' work, scripts, whatever you want to do. 
do that. If you can't think of shit to write, you just hand copy for 20 minutes, you 100% will have ideas on what to write. Thank you. You're yeah. And uh, I don't care if you buy it or not, but we do, Sarah and I created this product called Copy That, copythat.com, where you sign up and we send you shit to copy for like 10 days. Um, if you want, you can sign up for that. Or just find stuff that you like and just write it by hand every day for like 10 or 20 days. And every time you're going to write something, it works. Or just Google copy work. You'll see, I knew there was some science behind it, but I didn't entirely know. But it's pretty amazing. The reason that handwriting is more effective is because there's a, a muscular neurological link that um, embeds it deeper in your memory. So when your fingers are moving on the keys, there's very little muscle motion. When your hand is writing, it inscribes it deeper in your memory so that when you go to sleep that night, <laughs> That's awesome. Write the thing by hand. <laughs> this woman over here. <laughs> I should have done the whole thing on copy work. Yeah. So my question is, I understand how you talk about finding the articles that are popular. Then when you're writing an article and you're posting it on your blog, then is it the back end, the SEO, that helps you levitate that article to with what's trending yeah so first of all i'm not it's not necessarily that i'm looking for articles that are popular i'm looking for topics Conversations. topics that are topics that i think will be popular as well as sentiment and like just ideas that like humans will grasp onto but you know for what I'm people to find that if you have a platform that is not um, as popular as yours is right now, right? Then, then is it the SEO of how they find those popular conversations? So for us, we were a Google News provider, so that's why that Steve article, Steve Harvey article, went did really well. But what you're asking though is a huge challenge, which is basically you got to do it a ton of times, and most of the times it does nothing, but it slowly adds up. Um, and so when you're, well, oftentimes when you're writing that stuff, you want to have like a checklist, like I submit it to all these subreddits, I posted it on all these Facebook groups, I asked five or ten friends to share, I sent it to my email list, and you do that a bunch, and your first early articles only get like ten people, next week they get twenty people, and just kind of takes off, but it's a grind, it is a grind, I'm not going to lie, it is totally a grind. Um, oftentimes, when we would do these crazy things, like if, if do you, it sounds like you know a bit about search, is that right? A, a little bit. Not if you look up the hustles domain on H, HA refs or whatever it is, it's like crazy good. Because we would write all these crazy articles and all the news companies, like Business Insider or whoever, would like talk about the stupid stuff that we did or about how some guy, uh, uh, or like some, paid witness story, like they would link to us like crazy, and we weren't even trying to get links, and we would get links like crazy. But early on, it, it is a grind where you're constantly writing, you find topics that are popular, you decide where you think they're gonna be popular, you write and you post at all those places. And it fails most of the time, it, at, but if it, it succeeds some of the time, and it starts adding up. And it's just a grind. Yeah. So it's more about posting on third-party sites and getting oh, that awareness than... The name of the game is everyone's over here, you're over here, you're a nobody, siphon them off to yours, now you're a somebody. <laughs> you just do that a bunch, and you, but it takes years, and it's, it takes a lot of effort. Thanks. Yeah, it's all about piggybacking off someone else's until you're a big shot. And we're at we'll, do, we'll do this quick. quick. We'll try to do a lightning round. Yeah. Hi, I was just curious what the difference was between this and using Medium. Completely different or similar? It's not completely different. Medium, they, they, you're not asking the right question, I think. Medium, you could do Medium. I would say don't do Medium because they make it hard to do email pop-ups, I think. But you're, the, you're, Medium is like a replacement for WordPress, which is what I use, versus Tumblr. Or I don't even know what the platforms are anymore. Uh, <laughs> They're all fine enough, probably. You could, yeah, you could use Medium. But I don't think Medium will ever get you any discovery. I think it's just a good way, it's just a nice, pretty place to write. All right, uh, we'll just last one. 
quantity versus quality in particles. I know it's a gray area. That is such a false dichotomy. I hate when people say that. My writers, you'd be like, writers always talk about, they're like, no, I want to do quality over quantity. I'm like, dog, let's do fucking both. <laughs> let's write good stuff and a lot of it. You got to do both. Um, my opinion is when you're just getting started, probably quantity. Probably. But I think you have to do both. But I also think that if you dedicate 40 hours a week, it's not that hard to write one article a day. Um, or what Zach does, where he has one 3,000 word a week. I think that's quantity and quality. So it's just how much time you're going to dedicate to it. Thank you, everyone. We're going to be hanging out. Appreciate you.